Hey, welcome back. Listen, we about to get into a little love and marriage Huntsville drama. Now, you know, girl, you've been watching the show. It's plenty of drama to go around, but we're not going to talk about the typical drama. Now, if you haven't heard, I know you have, if you've been watching the show, and even if you haven't, um, Kiki Jabbar, which was one of the latest cast members, she passed away recently. Now, there was some drama around her passing. Okay, I heard one story that said that she passed away surrounded by people, loved ones in her home. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, and that gives you the thinking that was they preparing for her to pass away? What was the thing around it? Well, they said that she passed away from carbon monoxide poison in her car. Okay, so I guess that's one way to pass away with loved ones around. I guess, girl, that sounds very suspicious to me. But what made it even more suspicious is that the uncle or a relative came out and he just seemed like he was in his emotions and feelings. And I, and I rightfully so, if he said that, you know, one of his loved ones passed away and he felt like there was some issue with other people in the family or on the TV show. So he wanted to address it. So he was addressing... Um, Kiki's family member, which was Letitia Scott and her mother on the show. So they was going at it, you know, well, not really back and forth because Letitia said she wanted privacy and stuff like that because she was mourning. That's all I heard that she said. But the cousin was saying that he didn't want Tisha or her mama at the funeral and stuff like that. Well, come to find out, they still went to the funeral. And I felt like that right there showed that they actually care for her because despite anything, despite the odds, despite whatever was going on, they went in support, you know, in support of her at the funeral. Well, what um, caught me off guard is the fact that they was the uncle or the cousin or whoever he was, was blaming somebody for her demise. And I'm like, I thought it was carbon monoxide. How can somebody be blamed for that? Unless Letitia and her mom were was supposed to fix a car or fix the ventilation system in her garage and they never did it and then I can understand it but I don't think that was the case so that led me to believe did she pass away from um carbon monoxide or was it something more than that so girl so that's why we're gonna kind of somewhat investigate and we're gonna kind of go one by one on the people but not today we're gonna just focus on one person today and that one person we're gonna focus on today is miss melanie shari okay welcome her to the show hey melanie welcome to the show now we're gonna be speaking about kiki jabbar because everybody seemed like everybody from the show showed up to the funeral from what i heard from these youtube streets that everybody showed up except for her and I'm like, that's odd, because why wouldn't Melanie show up when Melanie was the person that I thought was Kiki's friend on the show? Because, now you know, you can't really believe some of these reality shows. Sometimes they create drama just to, you know, to kind of hype the show up. So, I didn't know if Kiki's drama with her cousin Letitia was hyped up. Was it real? Was it true? What was going on? Well, Melanie invited her to the, back to the show as her friend on the show even though her cousin didn't want her on the show melanie did so i thought that i'm like melanie you was her friend why didn't you out of all people they even said that martell's baby mom i mean baby mama aka um side chick showed up to the show showed up to the funeral now that may be why she didn't show up but that's still no excuse for you not showing up you a mature grown woman you could still show up for your friend okay but you know nobody then don't think nothing wrong with Melanie Shari not showing up to the show. Okay. I guess because my tail hope was there. So she didn't want to come. And I guess, you know, what her saying is, when God say go, I go. So I guess God didn't tell her to go to the funeral. Because she definitely didn't show up, girl, from what I heard, allegedly. Okay. So we're going to see what's the energy around Melanie Hope and Kiki. Was there any drama that we didn't know about? Was there any drama that Kiki didn't know about? Because with Miss Melanie, honey, okay, now I watched the show a couple of seasons. Not much because it got to a little snooze fest, baby. The drama was competitive, was repetitive, and I was over it, girl. I was just over these folks over the age of 40 fighting and arguing over the same exact thing every season. Back to back. Girl, I'm tired. I'm tired. But, you know. Melanie, she would claim she's more mature. She don't want to get into the drama, which I understood. She didn't want to get into the drama. She already had exposed her business when it comes to Martell Hope. You know, him and his cheating. 
So the fact is that, you know, she got past that. So we think, okay. So we think girl, it's like, without that, what, what does the show have? Because the reason why I started watching, because I thought it was going to be a real estate show. I thought they was going to go and uh, rehab and remake Huntsville, you know? Because I had a moment of living in um, Alabama, you know, in my younger years. And so I'm like, okay, I can relate. Go ahead. And if you're going to rebuild Alabama, go ahead and do your thing. Well, girl, they only went to an open lot and argued. No rehab, no real estate, no nothing was being done, girl. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and see what's the energy around Melanie Holt and Kiki Jabbar. What's the inner drama there that we need to know about, that we need to investigate? If not, girl, we're going to just move on. It's as simple as that. So, let's see what these cards have to say. Okay, Divine Angels, give them the best cards from this deck to describe the energy around Melanie Holt and Kiki Jabbar around the time of her passing. Because that's what's more important, okay? They may have started off good, but what happened to cause Melanie not to want to show up to the latest funeral when she claimed that was her friend. Okay. Melanie gives me though the thing about Melanie before I pull the cards is I mean when I, she first started off, um I, I mean I had no reason not to like nobody dislike nobody. So I liked everybody on the show. And you know, she was going through her drama and I was like feeling sad for her. I felt empathy for her. You know, it's like girl, you know you going through your thing, you know, get your life together. And then when she started turning her life around and doing better than her husband and stuff like that, I was rooting for her. Now, girl, not rooting for her like her fans do, girl. That's a different type of rooting, girl. Baby, that's a different type of, uh, baby, dedication. I didn't have that type of dedication. But as a woman to a woman, I, I love to see her glow up and do her thing and show that she was the, she was the power behind that power couple. So I was rooting for sis. But, you know, the thing about it with the fans, honey, when they, the way they was going at the side chick, and I was okay with that at the, at the beginning. It's like, okay, you got to teach the little side chick, you know, to stay in her place or whatever. I got it for a moment, but they kept on going year after year. And it was like, yeah, girl, this right here is giving harassment. It's giving mental issues. It's giving corruption, honey. And I was like, yeah, I got to tune out. I, can't, I cannot, you know, be associated. Or I never was associated, but I just didn't. Girl, I was like uninterested. It was like, what type of the devotion is this baby what kind of cult is going on over there girl i couldn't be a part of it so but it was something about melanie shari or, or melanie hope that's the last time i would known her it was just something about how i couldn't put my finger on it just seemed like she wouldn't be a good friend in real life she it seemed like if she, if you wasn't beneficial to her she she'll easily find a reason to cut you off and not show up to nothing none of your events but then want you to show up to her events it's like what you know, it's like, I don't get that. Because one prime example, Letitia, okay? Letitia, at, the, at one of the first seasons, okay? Letitia came to her event. She escorted Letitia out. Didn't want Letitia to come in. Letitia didn't understand why. Why she, you know, was escorted out and, and embarrassed like that. And then um, I saw a snippet snippet from one of the recent shows that showed that she was asking Letitia, why didn't you come to my podcast? Why didn't you come to this? Why didn't you come to that? And Letitia like confused, like, girl, you remember you kicked me out first season? Girl, I ain't never got over that. So it's just like she wants you to support her, her but she's not really a supportive friend. And I, I don't like that in a female, period. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and pull some cards real fast since I got that on out of there. Okay? Let me go ahead and pull some cards and see what's the energy around Kiki and Melanie Shari. Okay, is that something we need to know? Is there anything we need to know about these this relationship that can cause any type of issue? That's enough, girl. That's enough to tell us what we need to know. So let's see. The first card we got is we got harmony. Okay. So that's good. It seemed like, you know, for the most part, they got along well. Okay, they can kumbaya together. I, I see, you know, get along, gang, honey. It's, it's just like, okay, harmony is a good thing. We got the little cute little unicorn there. So it's like, okay, all right, that's a good way to start off. Followed by exhaustion. Uh oh, somebody got tired of somebody, baby. Somebody sick of somebody, somebody over it. Okay, somebody is exhausted and tired. It seems like you'll be exhausted trying to run in behind Melanie, okay, do everything she wants you to do. But then again, Melanie probably was exhausted with Kiki because I heard that Kiki has some, um, the, what can I say? They want, they didn't let her shine the best way. After she passed away, I learned that she was a professor and, uh, you know, she 
edu highly educated. But on the show, they made it seem like she was somebody who was stealing a thief, a, a addict, you know, like that. Like she was a cousin that, a reject cousin that just want to come on the show. That's how they made it seem. And it's like, girl, she got just as much education as the rest of you guys. So I don't understand why the show didn't shine that. At least I didn't see it. So I don't, I don't understand. But then again, I didn't watch faithfully like that. I, at the beginning I did, but then after season two, three, four, five, I, I, girl, I wasn't paying no attention no more. I just saw little snippets. So, um, but somebody got tired, baby. Somebody got exhausted. Okay, we got some exhaustion here. Followed by choices. Okay, so I mean, there are some choices that was made here that probably made somebody exhausted. Somebody had to choose. Okay, who do you choose? Whose side are you on? What What are the choices you're going to make in life? What path are you going down? Are we going down the same path? So I, I see some of that going on here, with you know, followed by completion. He's like, okay, well, girl, uh, we, we worked good together. You did what I need you to do. Okay, I'm exhausted. I'm tired because the choices you're making are starting to rub off on me, girl. And, uh, girl, this relationship has come to a completion. We are done. Okay, it's the end of it. There's no need to move forward. There's no need to uh, collect $200 or pass go, baby. So it seemed like there's something that came to completion right when, right before the restraints. Okay. There's some type of restraints on this relationship. Now, for the most part, I don't see anything diabolical here. I don't see anything like that. But we're going to find out what's going on with this exhaustion card, the choices. How did the relationship come to a completion and the restraints here? Okay, because the harmony, I'm assuming that everything is good. They started off good. They got along well. They probably had some things in common. And everything was all to the good. So let's see what's going on here. Okay. Now, when it comes to exhaustion, honey, uh, when it came to Melanie Shari and her relationship with Kiki, why is the exhaustion card here? Why is Melanie Shari exhausted when it comes to Kiki? Okay. Oh, it seems like it came to a uh, exhaustion because of a king of swords. Now, the king of swords is a father card, okay? He's supposed to be a protector, girl. But at the same time, he's very stoic. He's very uh, slick with that tongue, honey. He can be cold-hearted sometimes. He can be ice. He can be icy, honey. But then there's a lot of fog around him, which means it can be some type of illusions that's around this, this king of swords. The king of swords is usually a masculine energy. He's older. He's over the age of 25. Okay, and then again, you know, he may have dark color hair, but he has that sword, which means that sword can represent the truth. It can represent a weapon. It can represent um, pain, you know. So it seems like somebody became exhausted over a masculine energy. Well, it seems like Melanie could have came exhausted over a masculine energy. Let's see if Kiki got exhausted for because of... Um, What's this girl's name? Melanie. Let's see. Yeah. Did Kiki ever get exhausted, cause this exhaustion, or feel this exhaustion when it came to Melanie? So, it seemed like Kiki was looking, you know, it seemed like with Kiki, it was all about moving forward, okay? Moving forward, advancement. I see uh, travel. But it's, this person right here is kind of surveying the kingdom, surveying your land, surveying your inventory. What's going on, you know? And it seemed, seemed like she tried to advance a little bit. And it seemed like she could have tried to advance when it came to the show via Melanie. So, and, and that could have made her exhausted. Trying to, um, whether she was trying to prove herself some kind of way to Melanie to kind of advance, to move forward, to be, become, you know, have more of a role on the show. And that made her exhausted. Now, when it comes to Melanie, it seemed like there was some type of, again, this could be Martell that made Melanie exhausted but what that got to do with kiki i don't understand so but it's like you have to make a choice here what is the choice here why is the choice card here when it comes to melanie holt's relationship with kiki okay it speaks about frustration it seemed like the choices that kiki probably made probably frustrated melanie a little bit when she found out the truth when the truth got exposed got put out there it could have kind of you know 
exhausted her a little bit again made her very frustrated it's like a hollow victory like you know we win it in some type of ways but at the same time it's like we still losing girl okay we like we can't even really celebrate this victory because of what's being said the truth that's being exposed out there and with when it being an ace of sword it's almost like her truth end up seem like she feel like melanie felt like they was rubbing off on her okay so, and you know, Melanie ain't trying to have that. And I get that. I don't want nobody else drama rubbing off on me either. So this came to a completion, honey. Let's find out why did it come to a completion. Okay. Why did this relationship come to a completion? Or why is the completion card here when it comes to Melanie Holt and Kiki's relationship? Okay, girl, we got the texter, honey. It's like, honey, I'm going to text you, baby. Yeah, this over. This is over. This text said, think carefully before responding. So, you know how texts are. Sometimes you can have a misunderstanding when it comes to a text message. You know, misunderstood what somebody going to text you. Um, it speaks about a casual interaction. interaction, And it's like they detached over, over text, over a communication. So it's like the relationship came to a completion. And then there were some restraints here that was put up on this relationship. Let's find out what are these restraints that were put up when it came to these this relationship with Melanie, Shari, and Kiki. Oh, we got the simp card here. Would do anything to win you over. Huh. This speaks about the nice girl syndrome. A fool. Begging and groveling. Oh. Was Kiki begging to continue to be on the show? Was Kiki a simp for Melanie? Because Melanie was ready to, comp to complete the relationship. She was over it. She seemed like Melanie was exhausted and frustrated. Now, Kiki was a little exhausted too because she tried to uh, advance forward, you know. She thought that they had a good thing going on. But it seemed like this King of Swords kind of caused this exhaustion. Whoever this King of Swords is. I want to know more about this King of Swords. Who's this King of Swords here when it comes to this exhaustion between Kiki and Melanie? Who is this King of Swords? Ah. It seems like it's a wealthy man. A wealthy man. Now, who's wealthy? Now, that's not Martel off top. We already know Martel ain't got no money. So, it's not the wealthy man. So, this King of Swords could be the producer. Uh, who's the producer of that show? Carlos King? And so, there was some type of exhaustion. Okay, wearing out your welcome a little bit when it came to a wealthy man. This wealthy man is the King of Swords. It's almost like he's the one who probably cut the relationship. He wanted to cut things off or wanted things to be cut off here. And it left Melanie frustrated here. And it left... Kiki probably frustrated as well because you have to choose. There was a choice that had to be made. And it's like, okay, well, I guess we're going to complete the relationship or end the relationship because, you know, your time here has come to a, a completion, girl. It's, 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 it's over. Or you completed your task. So there's nothing else to do here. And they probably did it over text messages or some type of communication that was not very much... For her to be on the show, it seemed like it was a, a detached type of communication. Like, they said what they said, and that was it. Okay, we done. I ain't spoke to you since. And then it seemed like there were some restraints here. And it seemed like they left maybe Kiki here would do anything to win somebody over. Begging and groveling here. But there were some restraints. What is these restraints here when it comes to Kiki and Melanie's relationship? And why did somebody have to be begging and groveling here being, playing the simp? Okay. Uh, we got a marriage here. Somebody's marriage. Somebody's union. A partnership. It speaks about a partnership. There were some restraints here when it came to a partnership. Okay, now I know Kiki had a husband. She was married. But Melanie was not married. But again, there are some restraints when it came to this partnership. It's probably could speak about the partnership between these two as well. And it seemed like Kiki really wanted this relationship. She wanted, you know, this partnership. That's what this card represents. If it's not a marriage, it's a partnership. A third party energy so it seemed like there was a third party here 
two people and a third party. And that could, again, be that king of swords who is a wealthy man. Somebody that has more money than both of them. And I'm assuming that's the producer. Because, you know, her time has exhausted when it came to him. Or at least he was exhausted of it. And he told Melanie she had to make a choice. And so she had to cut somebody off. And that just so happened, had to cut Kiki off for some kind of reason. Now, why did the, Mel why did the wealthy man want Kiki cut off? Let's find that out. Let's see which cards would tell me that. Why did the wealthy man want Kiki cut off the King of Swords? He wanted to cut cut it off, honey. He was exhausted. Why? Okay. Good. I don't I guess he thought the relation the uh show wasn't growing and he got greedy. Okay. It speaks about, you know, he would put trying to make some type of preparation and some type of foresight like he was you know foreseeing something in the future that he didn't like you know either he couldn't write her into the role no more she exhausted her uh, role here or he got greedy and he couldn't pay a girl it speaks about growth and maybe she wasn't growing enough for him to be on the show is there anything else you want to tell us about this wealthy man and it's King of Swords when it comes to exhaustion, when it comes to Kiki and Melanie Shari's relationship. Again, okay, so the harmony became disharmony. You know, it became a disharmony type of situation. And somebody, he was searching for something else. It's like he was looking for something else here. Okay, so it seemed like he wasn't, you know, the harmony that they had. I don't know if it was the same anymore okay it seemed like the love was little to to non-existent as you can see with this little heart and somebody was searching for something else okay searching for more especially when it came to business somebody wanted to grow and got greedy this king of swords did okay when it came to wealthy since he a wealth coming strong across as a wealthy man he's showing he wanted to keep on growing when it comes to the money honey some kind of way and so that seemed like that's what's happening here. I don't see anything diabolical here. Again, uh, you know, the relationship just then it came to its completion, honey. Let Melanie say everything has a has a time and a season, and that was the end of the season. So that was it. So that's gonna be the reading for Melanie Shari and Kiki's relationship. Okay, let's see, girl. Why didn't you come to the funeral though? Let's ask that real fast. Okay, sis, why you didn't come to the, the girl funeral? That's the least you could have did. You know, the relationship was completed. So if you weren't friends, I guess you wouldn't show up. But why didn't you come to the funeral, Melanie? Okay. Eternal youth, honey. She said her energy, her newness, her vitality. Girl, she said she didn't have the energy to go. Okay, and then she said she had her young kids. She didn't want to bring her young kids to the funeral with the eternal youth since it's a funeral. And I guess it was her time with the kids. So, yeah, she didn't have the energy, girl. You know, the kids was too young, and that's probably why she couldn't come. And I guess that makes sense, all right? So that's going to be the reading for Melanie Shari and Kiki Jabbar when it comes to the love and marriage Huntsville drama. Okay, catch me on the next one where I interview Kiki's husband and then I'm going to interview Tisha Scott as well. Okay, all right, bye.